Greetings and welcome. We are in Senior English A and uh, Room 303. And uh, we are on page 522, and we are now going to turn to one of two sonnets by John Milton, the great poet. Now, of course, John Milton is well known for his classic epic, Paradise Lost. But what's important is to understand that before Milton wrote Paradise Lost, right, he was himself really in doubt as to whether or not he would ever be famous. Let's jot down really quickly at level one as we get ready to start into this poem, this sonnet. Let's jot down this question. What does fame mean to you? What does fame to be famous? Does it matter to you? Do you want to be famous? Now, one of the things we should point out right away is that John Milton, there's two things about him important for this poem. One, John Milton was a devout believer in God, devout Christian. Two, John Milton believed that God had him born to do something very famous, okay? What something very famous? For John Milton, he increasingly began to believe it was to be a famous writer. And so as he, ends, as he goes into his years of the 20s, he already is beginning to doubt himself whether, in fact, he's going to make a mark, leave a mark. Let's take a look at this poem now. We'll read it, and then we'll exegete after. Sonnet 7, sometimes referred to how soon hath time. Let's read it. How soon hath time, the subtle thief of youth, stolen on his wing my three and twentieth year. My hastening days fly on with full career, but my late spring no bud or blossom showeth. Perhaps my semblance might deceive the truth that I to manhood am arrived so near, and inward ripeness doth much less appear that some more timely happy spirits endureth. Yet be it less or more, or soon or slow, it shall be still in strictest measure even to that same lot, however mean or high, toward which time leads me and the will of heaven. All is, if I have graced to use it so, as ever in my great taskmaster's eye. Now at level one, let's just work. And we'll point out really quickly, of course, that we are looking at a sonnet. We can jump to 2B for just a moment. Notice your rhyme scheme. Notice the construction of this poem into, into cl two clear kind of distinctions, right? Okay, so you've got those first eight lines. Then, of course, you have that response of the lines to fall. Notice that you do have the iambic pentameter, right? We've talked about it before. Ba-bum, 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 ba-bum. My hastening days fly on with full career. Look at the third line. My hastening days fly on with full career. Ba-bum, 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 ba-bum. So we definitely are looking at iambic pentameter. But now let's work level one. What is it that John Milton is saying? And let's point it out right now at level one. He is writing to himself. He is writing a poem to himself. But what is it that he's saying to himself and about himself? Notice, how soon hath time, notice it's capitalized, the subtle thief of youth stolen on his wing my three and twentieth year exclamation point. Let's write it down at level one. He says, I'm already an old person at 23. Now, of course, today, we think of somebody at 23 as just beginning their life. Milton, however, began his intellectual life very early. Already at the age of 13, he was already a brilliant scholar with all of these huge ambitions. The way I've said it in the past, I'll say it now again. It's one thing to read Homer's Odyssey, Iliad and Odyssey, to read Homer's Iliad and Odyssey and go, wow, it's not bad, it's a pretty good story, not bad at all. It's another thing to read Homer's Iliad or Odyssey and say, when I grow up, I am going to write a poem just as important, just as famous. It's one thing to read Virgil's Aeneid, the great Roman epic. And to say, yeah, it's a great poem. I mean, that whole thing about, you know, the adventure of Aeneas and all of that. It's a whole nother thing to say, right? I'm going to grow up someday 
to write a poem that rivals Virgil's Aeneid. Think of it in these terms. It's one thing to go, for example, to a movie and watch a movie, right? You come out of the movie and you go, yeah, it's not bad. It's a whole other thing to say, when I grow up, I'm going to make a movie equally as important. Think about your favorite band. It's one thing to listen to that band or even watch them live. For example, go and watch them perform and go, yeah, it was an amazing performance. That's one thing. But what about the person who goes and watches and says, when I grow up, I'm going to be just as famous as that musician. We think of ball, uh, ball players who, when they were young children, they went and watched a ball game. While everybody around them was just enjoying the game, something inside of them told them, I'm going to be out there someday. I'm going to be playing. I'm going to be famous. But what happens to a kid who has that conviction but it's even more profound because he believes he was born by God to do that very thing. In other words, now he has a responsibility to actually follow through and to follow God's command to do whatever it is that he wants to do. And then he starts to get older and it's not happened. That's this poem. By the year 23 in his life, Milton already thinks of himself as a looser. Now that is fascinating given that he's already written some really important stuff. But notice he says it, time has stolen my youth. He continues with this word picture in verse 3 and 4. Watch it. My hastening days fly on with full career, meaning speed. In other words, I'm getting older. I'm getting older. What would it be like every morning to wake up as a senior and go, oh no, one more day, I'm getting older. And I haven't done enough. I haven't done enough. I've got to get some more stuff done. I've got to get some more stuff done. Now, some of us will just go, dude, you need to just take a chill pill and you need to just figure it out. But you, you don't get it. Milton wakes up every morning and says, I've got to get more done. I've got to get more done. Layered on top of that, to make that stress even more acute, Milton totally believes that God is watching him from heaven. He'll call him his taskmaster. The guy who's like the master of the slave that slaps the whip on him. Milton believes God is constantly watching him going, seriously? Really? You're not going to get any more done than this? And at 23, he's already having a midlife crisis. Take a look. But my late spring, he uses the word picture of your life as the four seasons of the year. Spring, summer, fall, winter. Winter being death, right? And so he already recognizes spring for me is over and I'm moving into summer and I don't have any growth on my tree. It's an interesting word picture. My late spring no bud or blossom showeth. Notice he says at line five, Perhaps my semblance, that is to say, my appearance or my image, might deceive the truth. In other words, prove false the truth. In that I to manhood am arrived so near, and inward rightness doth, doth much less appear, that some more timely happy spirits endureth. In other words, as your footnote says, others who seem to be more accomplished poets at the age of 24. In other words, he says, man, I, I, I look around me. This is the challenge of models. So, for example, Milton will have models in front of him, begetting hello with Homer, and then, of course, Virgil. And he will say, I'm 23 going on 24 years old, and I have not yet produced a work of legitimate merit. Something is wrong. I should be, I should be better on the road now. I should be further down the road. Yet, now the shift. Now, Milton is going to try to encourage himself. Yet... Be it less or more, or soon or slow, it shall be still, always, in strictest measure, even to that same lot, however mean or high, towards which time leads me, and the will of heaven. In other words, let's put it in our notes this way at level one. He says it this way. No matter what happens going forward, whatever time has ready for me. Whatever the will of heaven, God, has planned for me, he says, all is, comma, last two lines, if I have grace to use it so, comma, as ever in my great taskmaster's eye. Taskmaster? What is a taskmaster? This is his view of God. 
God is looking down from heaven and saying, seriously, I gave you all of this amazing talent. What have you done with that talent? Now, a story from the New Testament that was very influential in the mind of Milton was that famous parable Christ told about the three sons. The father came to the three sons. He had wealth. He gave the three sons some money. To the oldest son, he gives $10,000. To the next youngest son, he gives $5,000. To the youngest son, he gives $500. And he says, when I come back, I'll be interested to see what you've done with your money. The oldest boy goes out, we're told, invents a project, a business, and makes 10 times more money than the money was left. The second youngest son goes out, does the exact same thing, turns his money, small amount of money, into a tremendous amount of money. By the way, the money in the story is actually called talents. That is to say, pieces of silver, talents, right? The youngest boy, however, freaks out and says, 500 bucks, that ain't a lot of money. I'm worried I'm going to lose that money. And so he takes the money, he digs a hole, he buries the money, and he leaves it. When the dad comes back, he calls his three boys in. He asks the oldest boy, what have you done? The oldest boy says, done all right, done all right, took care of the money. Here it is back again, and I made a whole lot of extra money off of that money. To which the dad goes, great job. The second boy, same thing. Third boy, uh, yeah, here's the, pr here's the thing. I was kind of freaked out. You'd come back, and if I had lost your 500 bucks, I would get seriously bummed. So I dug a hole, I stuck it in a hole, and I, here it is. So you don't lose any money. And we're told that the father is outraged. Why? Because the young man had talent he did not use, even though he didn't have as much talent as the two older. This is a story Milton hears when he is very young, and it goes right to his psyche heart. Every day, he imagines that the taskmaster, the God who will be always watching and will someday return, remember our story, is constantly asking him, why haven't you done more with the talent that I've given to you? Dude, he is 23 years old. Old, or maybe we should say years young, right? The whole point then of this poem and why it's studied so often is two parts. One, it shows us the mindset of Milton at a very young age. He put tremendous pressure on himself to try to produce something great. Two, this is before he writes Paradise Lost. So Paradise Lost is in the future, the greatest epic poem in the English language. It's in the future. Milton will write it. Are you ready for this? When he is blind, he will write it. He loses his sight, and he still believes God needs something from me. Great. I still have pressure on myself. Let's go ahead now and jump to 2A really quickly and talk messages, themes. You can obviously write down a couple of these. There's a couple of different ways to read this poem. One is Milton's beating himself up over the fact that he hasn't used his talents. Another possible message is that Milton is trying to kind of soothe himself and say, even though I'm 23, I still must have, I got to have some time. Time is going to give me a few more years and the taskmaster is watching that eye of the taskmaster always watching, right? In other words, the will of heaven is still ever present in my mind, but I, I got to have, I got to have the opportunity still. Surely I'm going to have some more years left, right? In this time, by the way, people like Milton were always worried they were going to die young because the mortality rate was so unbelievably high. Dude, you stepped on a nail during this time. You would be dead. There's no tetanus shot during this time. You got me? So in other words, you start coughing. You know, like, you know, I'm not feeling good today. I'm not going to come to school. That ain't no thing today. You can always just go to a doctor and get some medicine and take care of it. Not in Milton's time. In Milton's time, you start getting sick. You literally are worried that you might be dead in a matter of days. It's, it's a legit fear. So for him, this thing about time, I've only had, I've 23 whole years and what have I done? I haven't done anything. Of course, when you look at the body of work he'd already accomplished, most everybody else would have looked at that body of work and said, it's enough. That's a whole lifetime of work. Not for Milton. Remember, that taskmaster, right? 
Let's talk at 2B really quickly. Obviously, we've mentioned already this is a sonnet. Pay attention to the construction of the sonnet into its two parts. Part one, man, I'm 23 years old. I haven't done anything. Part two, I still, I still have a chance. I still have a chance. And God is still watching. Let's jump to 3A, relationship to other texts. What is for you your favorite film about a driven artist, a driven musician? Someone who says, I have got to make it. Someone who says, I will be famous no matter what, I'm going to make it. And then the movie will tell the story of all of the obstacles that stood in the way of this individual. Didn't matter. The individual kept working, kept working, kept working, and finally arrived, right? We can think about ball players. We can think about musicians. We can think about artists who all share in common this driven, driven need to somehow produce and somehow make it. Fascinating. The number of films that have come out in the last few years that play this game, huh, right? All kinds of movies about people who endure all kinds of challenges and somehow come out famous, right? What is for you your favorite film about fame that actually tells the story of a real famous person, a person who actually lived, and these are often called biopics, right? They tell about a famous person who sometimes started with nothing and made it, right? Okay. There were all kinds of people that probably laughed at them and said it's not going to happen. Although we haven't mentioned it a lot at 3A, think about commercials. I'm only thinking right now about a commercial that's uh, running uh, about a young kid who says he's going to be a famous athlete and everyone kind of laughs at him. All of the adults in his life kind of look at him and laugh at him. And of course, we understand at the very end of this commercial, you're going to see some really famous ball player right now who's going to basically say, they all told me I couldn't do it and I didn't listen to them. I kept going. Let's jump to 3B for a moment. Question. We'll ask several to try and relate to this. Question. Where do driven people get their drive? So, for example, sometimes seniors will say this. You know, for me, it was like every school year, I always said the same thing. This is it. I'm really going to do it. I'm really going to get serious. I'm really going to try to apply myself. Because all those things they've been saying about me and all that potential that I have and all of that, I know it's true. And so it's time for me to actually step up and I'm going to do it. But to be honest, i got to admit, I made the promise to myself every September at the beginning of school and by Thanksgiving, I was pretty much back in the same old frame of mind. Dude, if I could just get through this year, I'm going to be fine. But my friend, she always, she always seems so unbelievably driven. She won't go to bed at night until all of her homework is done. If she's got an exam in four days, she starts now to get ready for that exam. I tease her and I call her an overachiever, overachiever. But the only reason I call her an overachiever is because I wish I could be I wish I could be that driven, but I cannot be that driven. Ball players are always saying something like this. Why is it there's two kinds of ball players? The ones who come to practice, train, and then leave, versus the ones who come early to practice, train harder than everybody else in practice, and then after practice, stick around. Where do those people come from? Are they born with that kind of drive, or do they choose that kind of drive? Milton, it seems, had that kind of drive. A second question for you, personal. This is, again, personal relation to this text. What are your thoughts about being famous and fame? Do you think it's a good idea to look at, for example, a role model, someone in front of you? For Milton, it was Homer and it was Virgil. It was the great poets of antiquity. Is it a good idea to look at somebody in front of you and say, when I grow up, I will consider myself a success if I am as successful as that person? If I am not as successful as that person, I'm going to think of my life as a looser. I'm going to, back to our earlier story, I'm going to be like that third son that buries his talent in the ground and never uses it. Ooh, is that a good idea? To put that kind of pressure on yourself. To say, before this age, or before I die, I want to accomplish these things. Which obviously leads to our final question. It's a very interesting one, and I challenge you to think about it and maybe even make the list. Before you die, what are three things you say, I will accomplish? No question. I will do this. What are those three things for you? Of course, some of us will say, dude, I'm not even 20 years old yet. I'm still young. Why would I make a list like that? Milton did. And it tells us a lot about who he is, that he made a list like that. And then he not only makes a list like that, 
Every morning he wakes up and says, I got to work on my list. I got to work on my list. I got to work on my list. You can imagine that the friends, the few friends around him are like, dude, you need to just calm down, chill out. And he's like, I can't calm down. Remember the story. The father comes back. We don't know when the father's coming back. And when the father comes back, he's going to demand that I've used my talent. What if I haven't used my talent? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. To live with that kind of stress all the time. Good or bad? Hmm. Very interesting. We can go, of course, in both directions with that debate. This poem obviously helps us, gives us a little bit of insight into the young Milton, right? Into the young Milton. Thank you.